Well, hey friends, um, I wanted to give you an update about life and about how we're doing um, since we lost our son just a little over a month ago. Um, I have wanted to make this update video for quite a while now, but to be perfectly honest, just life kind of got in the way. Um, you know, we're just in the midst of grieving and healing and, um, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I just, Shane's out with Aubrey and Cole is playing. Um, so I had some quiet moments to film this video. And that's one thing that I've kind of lacked a little bit recently is just some quiet private moments. Um, Shane is on a layoff right now. We knew that it would be coming. Um, and the timing of it, I mean, really is just, it was a God thing because I just don't know how we would have handled this if he had been away working. He was eight hours away. Um, he moved home like the weekend that Hart passed away. And so we were dealing with losing our son, um, welcoming Shane back home the very practical reality of him moving all his stuff back. Um, if you're new to my channel or unfamiliar of our story, my husband has been away, eight hours away, uh, working since January 14th. Um, he was home for a couple months, but for the most part, he was gone all year. Um, and so there's just that very physical reality of moving all of his stuff back and um, yeah, so there was a lot of just chaos and so we've just tried to be really gentle with ourselves in that transition. Um, we went home to Pennsylvania to be with my family, uh, less than a week or so, I think, after Hart was born. Um, I just couldn't, I couldn't function. I could not care for a home. I couldn't care for my kids. I couldn't, I couldn't be on in any way. And going home to be with my family, I had the freedom just to be at my sister's house. Um, she worked all day and the kids were at school. Um, and so my kids had like the fun opportunity of playing with all their cousins toys. Um, and so that would free me up during most of the day just to be, um, to zone out and watch good TV that I don't normally get here, like the Food Network. I think I've binge watched uh, On Demand Food Network like crazy. Um, it gave me the opportunity to uh, just grieve and not have to focus on necessarily like cooking and cleaning and all of that stuff. And it was very healing and it was really what I needed. Um, Shane had went uh, into New York to be with, um, he had like some, one of our dogs is in New York with a friend of his, um, with like a profession, he's a professional dog trainer. And so he went up there to do some training and, you know, just to kind of feed his soul. Like I, it was so needed for him and for me, like it just was good just to be on my own. I tend to um, be someone who draws in to myself uh, and I needed that space just to not have to think about anybody else but myself, to, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I spent a lot of time like just crying on my sister's couch. I couldn't sleep. I was often up to like 2 a.m. Just unable to sleep. Um, reading through some really good books that helped me in the grieving process. Um, I confronted a lot of things that had been rolling around in my heart, um, but I couldn't put words to them. But in reading some of these books and blogs and different things, I was able to start processing some of that stuff. Like, you don't realize the things that you will never have with your child. Like, I will never know him as a young adult. I'll never know him as a grown older man. I will never know his wife. His children will never run around my home. 
it's just, it's things like that that hit you like a ton of bricks when you first realize it. And the grief was so heavy and so real. And I needed that time just to feel those emotions. Um, as you can tell, it gets me a little weepy just even thinking of it, but <laughs> Colt's in the other room playing a game if you hear him yo-ho-hoing. Um, so it felt really good uh, to be able to experience those things in privacy um, and to not be confronted with them in like a public space where something would just completely hit me off guard. Um, I could just grieve and cry and and just confront those feelings. Um, it was there that I planned his memorial service. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was just really healing being with my family. I couldn't, um, because Shane had our vehicle, I couldn't really go anywhere. Um, my sister obviously has a car, but she has two kids and we all just wouldn't fit in her car with my two kids and myself and stuff. So I didn't go anywhere. Uh, I didn't really do anything except just be. And that's, I think, really what I needed. Um, I spent really good time with my mom and my stepdad and um, with my sisters. And it was just, it was just r really what I needed. Um, we had a memorial service for Hart uh, in early November. I'm drawing a blank if it's the third or the fourth. I My mind still is... Um, all over the place and I'm not good with dates right now like I there was a point in time where I couldn't even really form sentences um, everything was just garbly gook and uh, I was just really thankful that the people around me uh, gave me that sort of grace um, we had a memorial service and I was blown away by the people who came um, initially, uh, our pastor had, you know, offered the opportunity to have like refreshments afterwards and my in-laws offered to pay for those. So as we were kind of counting, like how many people we thought would be coming, I really, I was disappointed, not disappointed, but like, I just, there weren't going to be a lot of people just beyond like family and some, uh, close friends who said that they were going to come except that people just showed up uh, and it was so amazing and I remember walking up the aisle of the church we have we go to a really 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 large church like with balconies and you know it seats a couple thousand people and I started to walk up the aisle before the service started and I noticed people coming in that were just church members that some I'd never even spoken to before and it just overwhelmed me and I just started to cry. I'd been doing really good that morning um, but I was so blown away by the care of people um, who took time out of their Saturday to come and just be with us and to celebrate our boy and to offer support. We got so many cards and gifts and uh, just such an outpouring of love and I have come to realize that these things really matter if there is someone who has experienced loss in your life um, maybe you don't even know them well or even at all but you you know your acquaintance with them or something I don't know Showing up for these people who are hurting means everything. A card, a message, a gift, a meal, a gift card for a meal, a gift card to go shopping. Um, huge, so huge. Please don't be afraid to step into people's grief. Please do not. I think one of the hardest things that I had to deal with was the people who didn't step into our world and into our grief. People that I considered 
some of those ride or die people, uh, people that I ministered with or ministered under, um, people that I considered friends and people that I thought like were my husband's friends, uh, people that we knew well, who never said a word to us, who never reached out to us, who let weeks and weeks and weeks go by before they reached out to us. And that's the hard stuff. Like that adds like another layer of grief. And I've tried to be really graceful in those moments because I just, I don't want to be that person. Um, but it's tough. Uh, it's, it's really hard. And so my deepest encouragement would be don't be afraid to reach out to people. Your words, over and over I've heard people say, I don't know what to say. And my response is there isn't anything to say, but the fact that you're saying anything at all means everything. It absolutely means everything. I've said over and over again, I cannot believe the people who came out of the woodwork, so to speak, and spoke into our pain, who... Um, you know, these are people that I am acquainted with, but I haven't spoke to in years. They haven't spoke to me. Like, it's just one of those things. You know those people in your world. Like, your Facebook friends, or you, like, went to the same church, or you went to the same school, or whatever. But you're they're not, like, your, your inner circle people. But there were so many people who are not in my circle that just flooded in. And that... I think was some of the biggest healing stuff for me um, to know the depth and the care of other human beings. Um, even now, a month later, we're still getting meals. We're still getting cards. Um, people are still messaging. I read every single one of your comments on my videos. Um, I couldn't respond just because I I just wasn't in that space to be able to respond. But I've read every single one and my heart breaks for those of you who've walked this road. Um, I just, I'm, I never knew the level of pain that came with losing a baby. Um, whether it was miscarriage or infant loss or SIDS or even if your child is 16, 46 years old, like losing a child. I've, I've said this for years, but it's a pain that no mother or family should ever have to experience. And my faith was called into question, like, especially as soon as this happened. Um, I couldn't understand why God could be so cruel in allowing this to happen. Um, but he pursued me so much and drew me back to himself. And I realized that the Lord could have changed all of this. He could have miraculously made none of this be a reality. But that wasn't his plan. His plan was never for death. His plan was a perfect world and for no crying, um, for no loss. His plan was never this, but we live in a broken world. Um, and I'm so thankful how he just gently pursued my heart and I've come to experience him in such a new and different and fresh, beautiful way. One that I don't know I would ever have realized had he not, um, if a heart had not passed away. Um, it's just, it's been incredible. The kids are doing good. Um, it's not to say that they don't miss their brother because he is a part of 
our daily conversation, um, especially the past few days, Colt has been saying that he misses heart. Um, the other day he said he wants heart for Christmas. Um, when we brought Heart's ashes home, it was it was a hard moment for all of us. We all were crying. Um, we still have to get his photos back from uh, the photographer. They took some photos of him in the hospital, and um, there's an, a volunteer, not a vol there's a nurse who volunteers to put together like a lovely montage for parents who've lost a child, uh, like for baby loss. Um, and so we should be getting those back hopefully very soon. So I know that when those come home, that will be another layer of grief that's being peeled back because we will see his little face and his little hands and his little body all over again. And for my kids, it'll be the first time that they've seen him. Um, we have a lifetime to miss him and every day brings us closer to being with him again. Um, but I also know that we have life here to live. Um, Christ called us to an abundant life and I'm over and over reminded that there is a time for weeping and a time for mourning, but that we will laugh again. We will, the joy comes in the morning. Like it's scriptural. Like we have laughed. We have um, had really good moments as a family, especially uh, Shane and I, our marriage is probably better than it ever has been. Uh, in our entire 11 years marriage, um, we are doing so well as a family and Jane has been everything that I couldn't have been. And I've said that to him over and over where I cannot laugh, where I cannot function, where I cannot be who I am. He has been for our family, for, um, for me, for just us, like he has been everything I never could have been. We went through some hell at the beginning of this year um, and God redeemed our story. And I think that we had to walk through that hell because the Lord knew what would be happening to us and we would not have survived. Um, we almost didn't survive earlier this year, but God redeemed us, he changed us. And, um, I believe that we were being healed and redeemed and renewed for a moment like this. Um, I don't know what our future holds. I don't know if we'll ever have more children, if we'll ever try again. Um, it's way too early for us to even have those conversations. I didn't feel like doing my hair today so it kind of left a little curly and I always feel weird when I have curly hair but that's beside the point. We are doing fun things. We are decorating for Christmas. You can probably see some of the junk in the background. Um, the house is a disaster because we are in Christmas mode and I find that the transition of seasons just makes everything crazy. Uh, I have filmed um, decorating our tree I'm going to film um, decorating some other spots in our house. Um, I always have a tree in my kitchen and I have um, uh, some other little Christmas trees that I may film. Um, just filming a few different vignettes so like my doing our, I call it my mantle, but it's always my bookshelf. Um, just doing some things like that. So I do have some videos coming, um, but I wanted to get this out to you to let you know how we have been doing. Um, because Heart was uh, over 20 weeks old, um, we will have, uh, there will, there's child benefit for him. Um, 
so we will get money for his his passing and uh, we've decided to take the kids to Disney they don't know um, we're gonna tell them at Christmas that we are going to be going uh, for March 3rd uh, when Hart's due date was so um, Winnie the Pooh has always been before like very early in my pregnancy like I just was so attached to Winnie the Pooh I loved Winnie the Pooh as a kid uh, and for some reason it was just something that like stuck with me I'm not like I don't even know Winnie the Pooh would not have been my first choice as like how to decorate or like anything like that but it was always like the classic vintage Winnie the Pooh um, and so I bought like a book and um, a classic Winnie the Pooh teddy bear and we just had like all these Winnie the Pooh things and that was also kind of the theme of his um, his memorial service and so uh, March 3rd there uh, we plan to go to one of the resorts does uh, a breakfast and all the Winnie the Pooh characters are there so um, I, my hope is to get us all like Winnie the Pooh themed ears and go to the breakfast on March 3rd so meet the characters and that is um, our way of honoring our boy uh, and using we're going to donate some of the money in his name and then the rest we're going to just go on a wonderful family vacation and I'll be because of him and he will be with us we have things in our house that represent him um, we've got a couple ornaments on the tree that uh, were from that represent him I hear cold. Um, and you'll see like in my Christmas decor tour and stuff like how we're we're honoring him and how he'll be a part of our life forever so anyways we are doing really good uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram that's where I kind of post the most um, about like how we're doing and different things like that um, I had a lot of posts about him recently and about how we're feeling and I've just after his service I moved to a place of peace I couldn't really describe it in the moment, but as I was talking with a friend, I realized that what I felt after was peace. And not that I wouldn't cry, because I cry every day. Uh, not that I wouldn't ache for him, because I do every moment. Uh, but there was such peace after his service. And um, I feel like we're just starting to move into a new, a new phase of of life so anyways um, I do hope to share with you bits of his memorial service I was gonna have it filmed but my dumb camera I bought new batteries for it but I think there's a problem with the camera itself and not the battery issue because it drained the battery like I charged them overnight and the next day they were dead as a doornail and I didn't realize till we were at the service so everything that we have is just filmed with either my iPhone or my sister's iPhones. Um, but So that was really disappointing and heartbreaking. But I do want to put together a video of what I have. Um, and I think I'll share it on my channel. Um, and I will have some videos at some point about planning a memorial service for a baby that you've lost. Um, either through miscarriage, infant loss or something like that because there wasn't a lot of resources and then I also want to have a video um, of resources that he's going outside and it's snowing I don't know what's going on um video of resources for moms and families who have lost a baby uh things that have really really helped me so that will be kind of coming at, at various points, uh, but I don't want to let this moment go by because there have been so many things that have helped me and I want to be able to give back to others in that way. So, anyways, uh, that is kind of it for my little update. I hope you guys are doing well. Again, thank you for all of the comments um, and for reaching out and... Um, 
just being there for us. You will never know how deeply thankful I am and thank you just doesn't seem to even be enough, but that's what I have to give. Um, so thank you from the very, very bottom of my heart for being invested in us and loving us and sharing this journey with us. Um, you guys are awesome. And I will see you in my next video.